How's it going, entomologists? My name is Jack, and this is Kentucky Bugs. This week, we're going to be looking at everybody's favorite first tattoo idea, butterflies. Butterflies are part of a much larger order of insects known as Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera include some other winged beauties, like the skippers and moths. The order Lepidoptera first appeared in the fossil record around 200 million years ago. It is suggested via the molecular clock that butterflies that we know and love today appeared sometime in the Cretaceous period. Moths belong to the same order as butterflies, and a majority of the species in Lepidoptera are classified as moths. More specifically, there's around 160,000 species of moths out of about 180,000 species of Lepidopterids. That's about 90%. But that's enough about moths for right now. We'll have a video more about them in the future. Entomologists often call butterflies charismatic microfauna because they have long captured humans' imagination. Culturally, there is tons of folklore regarding them. Native Americans of the Blackfoot tribe believe that butterflies brought dreams. Irish folklore holds that butterflies are the souls of the dead waiting to pass through purgatory. The first entomological reports from the New World were actually from Christopher Columbus himself, whose ships were swarmed by clouds of yellow butterflies upon their arrival. But let's move on to what hopefully everybody remembers from elementary school, the butterfly life cycle. Butterfly eggs come in a variety of colors and shapes. They've got to be kept out of direct sunlight in order to not dry out. They are found on the undersides of leaves and they can easily be ripped or torn. Usually their first meal is their own shell. I usually throw that part away. And then the next stage, as we all know of the life cycle, is going to be the caterpillar. This can also be known as the larval period. This can be a very transformative time for a young butterfly. Just like we can change our styles, like some of us were seeing kids that turned into preppies, caterpillars can change their looks drastically before they even develop into butterflies. They do this by shedding their skin into larger and fresher skin called molting. Each time they do this is called an instar. Some caterpillars could look black and fuzzy for their first instar and white and spiked for their last. One of the most important things caterpillars do is eat. There's a reason they wrote a book about it. In two weeks, a feeding caterpillar can increase its own size by 2,000 times. The Texas Butterfly Ranch put it right when they made the analogy, imagine a seven pound newborn consuming 1,400 pounds of formula in two weeks. That's a lot. Not all caterpillars are as cute and cuddly as Pokemon may lead you to believe. Some species of caterpillar have a predator repellent, as they can sting and deliver a sharp pain or rash towards an aggressor. Blair here from Idlewild Butterfly Farm in Louisville was brave enough to bring out some of the stinging caterpillars. Spines on there, so it's different than like a bee sting. This is multiple stings at once. Or caterpillars can even shoot their chemical defenses at the attacker. Swallowtail caterpillars have a defense mechanism called osmeterium, which is a gland that is held inside the head and it stores aromatic compounds from the plants that they eat. And when they're disturbed, that gland everses, pops out of the body, and it's very stinky and it tastes very bad. So those caterpillars do have a way to deter predation by larger predators like birds, just by virtue of being really nasty. After eating and eating, the caterpillar will find a nice spot to settle down. It will then use its spinnerets on its mouth to make silk and hang upside down like Spider-Man. This part of silk is called the cremaster. Finally, they molt their skin one last time and they reveal the final instar, the chrysalis. Inside the chrysalis, metamorphosis occurs. Now, you may think that during metamorphosis, the caterpillar just grows wings and becomes a butterfly. Well, it's actually much crazier than that. The bug actually liquefies its own innards and starts to use that to build the body of a butterfly. An even crazier part about this is that the butterfly retains its memory from when it was a caterpillar after its brain got turned into liquid in the chrysalis. I can't even remember to charge my phone at night, and my brain's only partially liquefied. Here's Rachel from Idlewild Butterfly Farm in Louisville to tell us about the chrysalis. The chrysalis is totally alive. The only part that is unalive is a thin papery shell. They're attached to a stick on a plant, and they're made to uh, be very, very cryptic to look just like that plant structure. So here we can see a swallowtail chrysalis. This is an eastern black swallowtail. And we can see how cryptic it is when it's still attached to its host plant. We have a green stem from the host plant here and jutting out to the side, attached by a little bit of silk at the bottom, 
and a little string of silk here at the top is the chrysalis. And we can see it looks very much like part of the plant. And so it is very easy to overlook these chrysalis. They're in the chrysalis for roughly one to two weeks until they finally emerge as a butterfly. When they do emerge, they have six legs and a proboscis used to suck up nectar and other liquids. This can include blood. Their eyes as caterpillars were simple ocelli and are now compound eyes that see much more detail and in ultraviolet. Go watch our bug vision video to see how important that is. Butterflies are covered in modified hairs called scales. Here's Rachel to tell us more about them. All butterfly and moth's wings are covered in tiny little powder-like scales that produce the pattern and help protect the very fragile wing. They don't regrow or regenerate the scales, so once they're gone or rubbed off, they cannot produce more. Blair here will tell us how species of butterfly spend their winters in Kentucky or abroad. Every bug has a way that it overwinters. So like you said, the monarch migrates a couple thousand miles from here to Mexico. Uh, we also raise red spotted purple butterflies. Those overwinter in little sleeping bags as in, their, as in the caterpillar stage. Um, so do viceroy butterflies. And then we have other butterflies like our swallowtails that overwinter in their chrysalis stage. And now Rachel will tell us about some of the butterflies that live here in Kentucky. We have here the giant swallowtail, which is North America's largest butterfly. So it's pretty similar to most of the other swallowtails. Since they are a bigger one, they can take a little longer to grow. Then they survive as adult butterflies for about two to three, up to five weeks. Oh, it's a very vibrant pastel yellow. It has uh, spots of rust red and streaks of blue and it's just very beautiful on the dorsal face. It is bold black with bold yellow lines. These are called morning cloak butterflies because of their dark, rich, black burgundy coloration. And they do have a bold gold stripe that runs down the outside of the wing margin. These are a Kentucky native found all throughout Kentucky okay. and its neighboring states. Uh, this is one that hibernates in the adult butterfly phase. This is the underside of the wing that we can view when the wings are closed like this. When they're resting, they're very cryptic. When they're flying with the wings open, they're easier to spot. We can see the beautiful burgundy blue and gold coloration. These are eastern black swallowtails. These are some of our most common swallowtails because they have some of the most prolific and abundant host plant. These two butterflies are only a couple hours old and now they're in the phase where their wings are, for lack of a better word, inflated. It's absolutely gorgeous. We've got black, we've got yellow, orange, even blue. And blue is, of course, the rarest color in nature. This is not an at-risk butterfly because they have so many natural host plants. Now, of course, as insects continue to decline due to three main factors, climate change, pesticide use, and habitat loss, all butterflies are seeing a decline in numbers. This is a zebra swallowtail, and it's very easy to see why it has that name. It has bold black and white stripes with just a little dot of red on the hind wing, maybe a little bit of blue. This is a fairly uncommon swallowtail in Kentucky. Even though their host plant is the pawpaw tree, which is natively found in Kentucky. And of course, we have the long tails on the wings that are characteristic of our swallowtails. It does still have the same tearaway function, you know, in flight. That is going to be the first thing that a flying predator like a bird will be able to grab. So it is made to simply tear off to let the butterfly escape. With most butterflies, the wing pattern has a subtle difference between, or sometimes a dramatic difference, between the two reproductive sexes. There are a couple things you can do to attract butterflies to your garden, particularly adding plants for nectar like blue vervain, milkweed, and virgin's bower. Just as important as food plants are for adults are places for mom butterflies to lay their eggs. These host plants can be specific for different types of butterflies. Dill, fennel, and parsley for swallowtail. Wild cherry and willow for red spotted purple. And for our state butterfly, the Viceroy, try willow, apple, or poplar. While not every butterfly species is endangered, their numbers are decreasing due to everything from climate change to deforestation. So planting these host plants can bring an oasis to butterflies in urban environments. 
Thank you all so very much for watching. We'll have another video up like this on YouTube next week. If you're bugging for more content though, make sure to check out some of our other social media profiles. We have exclusive content coming out throughout the week. And lastly, what do you call a rebellious ant? Defiant. Thank you very much.